Hello Internet, so nice to see you. Today we talk about diminished chords and how to change key using them. Now, diminished chords are some of the most useful chords in music theory because you can do a number of different things with them. So today we are just scratching the surface, today we are just showing one possible application, and what we are showing today essentially is just an example of what you do with uh, diminished chords. It definitely does not exhaust the possibilities of diminished chords. But still, what we are seeing today, it's an important application of diminished chords that every musician should know. But first of all, let's see what a diminished chord actually is. A diminished chord is a chord of four notes, and every note is a minor third above the previous note, that is, three half steps. So, for instance, the C diminished chord has notes C, then E flat, which is three half step above C, then G flat, which is three half step above E flat, and then A, which is three half steps above G flat. Now, notice that the C note could be put three half step above the A note, so essentially all the notes of this chord have the same distance from each other. This makes it what we call a symmetric chord. Every one of those notes could be the root of the chord because essentially, if you see, the C diminished chord, the E flat diminished chord, the G flat diminished chord, and the A diminished chords all have the same notes. They are effectively the same chord. This interesting thing that all the notes of a diminished chord are at the same distance from each other and none of them is in a special position creates some very useful consequences. Then if you play the same shape, three half steps higher or lower, you get the same chord. Which makes learning and using the diminished chord on the guitar fretboard very easy. At this point, you may think that the diminished chord sounds weird and that you will never use it in your own chord progressions, but in a moment you're gonna play it in context and then you will hear that it actually sounds really good. Before doing that, though, we need to see another interesting property of the diminished chord. Let's take the B diminished chord, B, D, F, A flat. Now, if I choose any note of this chord and I lower it a half step, then I get a dominant chord. For instance, if on this chord I take the A flat note and I lower it a half step to a G note, the resulting notes are G, B, D, F, and this is a G dominant 7 chord. If I'm taking the B note instead, and I lower it a half step to a B flat, I have B flat, D, F, A flat. This is a B flat dominant 7th chord. If I take the D note and I lower it a half step to D flat, I get D flat, F, A flat, B, which is enharmonic to a D flat dominant 7th chord. That is, it has the same notes but spelled different because the D flat 7 chord is D, F, A flat, C flat, which is the same as B. And finally, if I take the F note on the original diminished chord and I lower it by a half step to an E note, I get E, A flat, B, D, which again is enharmonic, so it has the same note, spelled differently, to an E dominant 7 chord, E, G sharp, B, D, because A flat and G sharp are the same note. So all this means that one diminished chord is very similar to four different dominant 7th chord. Now, the G 7th chord is the fifth chord in the key of C. The B flat 7 chord is the fifth chord in the key of E flat. The D flat 7th chord is the fifth chord in the key of G flat, and the E seventh chord is the fifth chord in the key of A. So this B diminished chord, which can also be called the D diminished chord, the F diminished chord, or the A flat diminished chord, works as a bridge between all those keys. Now, to see how we can use this chord to change a key, let's take a very simple chord progression. I'm gonna play a 1-4-5 chord progression in any of those keys. So, in the key of C, a 1-4-5 is C, F, G7. Now, when I play this chord progression and I get to the G7 chord, I can follow with a B diminished chord, which again has only one note of difference, and this note is only one half step away. 
Then, after the B diminished chord, I can play either the E7 or the D flat 7 or the B flat 7, and from there I move to a new key. So, for instance, here I'm gonna play C, F, G7, then B diminish my bridge chord, then E7, and then from E7 I'm playing A, D, E7, A to stay in the key of A. So you hear, moving through this diminished chord creates a very smooth change between the key of C and the key of A. Let's see the same going from the key of C to the key of G flat. So I'm going to play C F G7, then B diminish, then D flat 7, and from there I play G flat, C flat, D flat, G flat in the key of G flat. Again, a very smooth change between the key of C and the key of G flat. And then let's do the same from the key of C to the key of E flat. So I'm gonna play C, F, G7, B diminish, B flat 7, E flat, A flat, B flat 7, E flat. Now, so far, I've worked only with major key, but the interesting thing here is that G7, for instance, is not just the fifth chord in the key of C, it's also the fifth chord in the key of C minor, and the same for all the other, B flat 7, it's also the fifth chord in the key of E flat minor, D flat 7, it's also the fifth chord in the key of G flat minor, and E7 is also the fifth chord in the key of A minor. So, this B diminished chord connects not only four major keys, but connects also four minor keys, and in fact it connects all those eighths key together. So, I can move from the key of of C into the key of G flat minor if I want, using the exact same trick. So for instance I can play C, F, G7, then B diminish, then I'm gonna play D flat 7, G flat minor, and then I'm gonna stay in the key of G flat minor by playing C flat minor, D flat 7, G flat minor. <laughs> Again, a very smooth change. I can also, of course, do the same with the key of E flat minor. So C F G7, then B diminish, then B flat7, then E flat minor, A flat minor, B flat7, E flat minor. I can, of course, use this trick to connect the C major key with the A minor key, but this is overkill because the keys of C major and the key of A minor contain the same notes, so a change of key between them can actually be much easier than that. But still, if I go through all those steps, it works perfectly well anyway. So, C, F, G7, B diminish, E7, A minor, D minor, E7, A minor. <laughs> And 
of course, I can also connect this way the keys of C major and C minor, but again, this is overkill because both the keys of C major and the key of C minor contain the G7 chord, so I don't need to move through the B diminish to change in between those keys. So you see, we took a very simple chord progression, a 1 for 5 in different keys, and we connected those keys smoothly using a diminished chord. This is just one example of the many things you can do with those amazing diminished chords. They really can do a lot of things. They can solve many problems that no other chord can solve. Now, if you want to know more about what you can do with diminished chords, and if you want to see many different ways to change key, then I suggest you take a look at my course, Complete Chord Mastery. Complete Chord Mastery is not a book. It's a complete video course studied to teach guitar players everything they need to know about chords and harmony. We do all our theory directly on the fretboard. There are no examples played on piano here. You can see everything done directly on your fretboard. All the examples are transcribed in both standard notation and tablature, and a complete set of exercises to learn to apply those things is given in the course. If you have a minute, just click on the link and check it out. If you like this video, smash on that like button and don't forget to subscribe, and if you have any comment or feedback or any requests for new video, please write them down in the comments. I love hearing from you guys. This is Tommaso Zilio on MusicDuty4Guitar.com, and until next time, enjoy.